Healthcare Exposed with SR Ridley, a nurse you can trust. Welcome back to Truth Hour, Healthcare Exposed, and I am SR Ridley, a nurse you can trust. Today, we're going to wrap up the saga of the two most dangerous nurses existing in the ER today. But first, we're going to recap. And I'd like to say thank you for returning for episode three. Hopefully you had a chance to watch episode one and two before this. And in episode one, we talked about the float nurse. And I gave you seven questions to ask when you enter today's emergency rooms to make sure that you have a safe, effective visit. In episode two, we talked about the new graduate nurse and why they should never enter an emergency room directly from nursing school. And just to add a little bit more to them, when a surgeon becomes a surgeon, they don't finish high school and say, I'm a surgeon. No, they don't. They have to go to college, undergraduate school. They have to go to medical school. They have to do a intern year, residency, and then most specialize. So they don't stop at the top. They start at the bottom and work their way up. They understand the process. And this is why your new graduate nurse cannot start at the top because then they haven't acquired what it takes to start from the bottom to understand the top. And in the emergency room, seconds count and lives matter. So you can't have your weakest links in the emergency room. Now, for more information on that, you must go back and watch episode two, because today we are going to talk about the charge nurse, the token for the money, the motto, charge nurses who care only about getting you in and getting you out by any means necessary. Their ultimate goal is the almighty dollar. They have forgotten the word nurse in the word charge nurse. So the true definition is what is a charge nurse? So a charge nurse is the ultimate navigator. He or she is the person that truly guides, they're the gatekeeper to whether or not you come back to the emergency room now or you wait. Now, in conjunction, you have a triage nurse, and that triage nurse is, when you couple the two together, they culminate a relationship that can ensure your patient's safety if you have your two strongest links there. However, today, in today's emergency rooms, I want you to, next time you're in an emergency room, ask to speak to the charge nurse and ask the charge nurse how many years of nursing experience they have. You're gonna be surprised to find out that they have six months to two years of nursing experience in which all of it began in the emergency room. When they say that to you, you know what I'm gonna tell you, Ron, you are now in danger. And now I'm gonna give you three points and tell you why. Your charge nurses traditionally had experience, 10, 15 years experience because you not only have to understand patient care, you have to understand how the hospital works. You have to have an understanding of the flow of the hospital. Nurses on the floor, nurses in the ICU, nurses in the intermediate care. They're different branches of a hospital. You have to understand how doctors perform on different flows. So you have to have an eclectic type of academia to be able to be a charge nurse along with experience. So if you place the weakest link, a fledgling novice nurse in the position, the most important position of a nurse in an emergency room, what will you get? You're gonna get true incidences such as I'm gonna tell you as we continue through this saga. If the person heading the ship is the weakest link, and then you have 85 to 95% of all new graduate nurses. Who's gonna ask who a question? And this is what you get, true story. So the char I told you that the triage nurse has to be one of your strongest nurses. Now, ladies and gentlemen, there is something in the world called a stroke. And when you have a stroke, that means you're having a untoward negative event happening in your brain where there's decreased brain flow to a part of your brain. 
So the things that we do to you is emergent and we have to do these things to you within less than an hour. So when you come into an emergency room, it's important that the person in the front understands that and that it is relayed back to the token charge nurse. True story. I'm working in this faith-based hospital and they put their weakest links in triage. This one young lady, she had been a nurse for 11 months directly from nursing school and they have her training people. I'm working in an area one through four and she brings back a patient having an active stroke. She walks back a patient having a stroke. The patient entered the emergency room, told her that they had had a stroke in the past and that they had to use a walker. A walker is a device that you use to help you walk because she couldn't move one side of her body. Instead of doing the right thing, the safest thing, and getting a wheelchair, she made the lady having a stroke walk back to the room. She put the patient in the room and never ever told me the nurse that the patient was having an active stroke. Now, the charge nurse knew the patient was having a stroke. When you come to a hospital and you're having a stroke, there's something we call called a BAT. And BAT stands for brain attack. I know it sounds kind of odd to say that, but they wanted to come up with an acronym that made people react quickly. But the bottom line is that part of this patient's brain was not getting oxygen. She put a patient in a room, never told the nurse myself that the patient was having a stroke. The charge nurse never relayed, never activated the, the stroke team. So this patient sat in a room, not on any kind of cardiac monitoring to suffer. But more importantly, why would you walk a patient having an active stroke back from triage to the ER room if the patient told you that the patient's having difficulty walking? When I speak to you about critical thinking, and I use that term a lot, in my anesthesia program, I used to explain that to some of my colleagues, and what I would say to them is, critical thinking is the ability to plan for the what if. See, in critical areas of healthcare, we can't wait for you to have the critical event. We have to be mentally academically and clinically prepared for the what if. What if you stop breathing? What if you pass out? What if these things happen? What have we done? What safety regulations have we put in place to make sure that we maintain your safety at all times? This lady was having a stroke. She had slurred speech. She couldn't move one side of her body. What should have happened, critical thinking should have occurred. This fledgling new graduate nurse should have never walked back a patient having a stroke patient. She should have put this patient in on a stretcher, which is a bed in the ER, or at least a wheelchair. And there should have been multiple people there at the bedside to assist this lady from getting from the wheelchair to the stretcher. The stroke team should have been alerted immediately. This isn't just Chanel, this isn't just SR Ridley saying this. This is state law. You have to activate a stroke alert immediately upon the patient's arrival. Now, this patient didn't come in by an ambulance. This patient came into the emergency room. So what's the problem? So the problem is, is that your charge nurse needs to constantly be relating and communicating with the triage nurse to make sure that incidences such as this does not occur. So then you ask yourself again, so what's the real problem? Your charge nurse needs to have the capability and the foresight to be able to tell the ER physician, hey, we have this patient out front, I need you to go and look at this patient right now. Your charge nurse needs to place the patient's safety at the forefront of their mission at all times. And that's just one incident. So what's the takeaway story from that? If you or your loved ones enter an emergency room having slurred speech, you can't move one side of your body, you have weakness on one side, your arms are just drifting, you're uncoordinated, you've lost your eye vision, you need to make sure 
that that charge nurse recognizes the severity. And this is why in this book, I tell you that you have to have a universal patient advocate. And this person is a person that when you're not feeling at your best, that they, in for better terms, they have your back. They're there to protect you. Because if you think you're safe in today's emergency rooms, I promise you, you are not. Another true story. 57 year old lady comes into the emergency room. She can barely breathe. She comes to, when you first come into an emergency room, first you come into a check-in desk. That person, believe it or not, has the foresight to be able to tell the charge, the triage nurse that, hey, I need you to look at this patient. She doesn't look good. But this particular patient came in, she could barely breathe. She couldn't speak in a complete sentence. So when I speak to you again of being able to critically think, when a patient comes in and they cannot speak in a complete sentence, and this is what I mean by speaking in a complete sentence, my name is, I can't get, you have to, that's not being able to speak into complete sentences. They can only use short bursts of two and three sentences. That should tell the triage nurse that this patient's airway could be impaired. It could be closing. So the next step that you ask, so why is this important? This is important because the next step of this patient not being able to speak in complete sentences is this patient will lose oxygen to their brain and they will pass out. So this same triage nurse of 11 months, she triages the patient. The patient had high blood pressure, high cholesterol, diabetes, and the patient was just a tad bit overweight. She made the patient who couldn't breathe sit back in the ER lobby. She made the patient who couldn't breathe, who couldn't complete a complete sentence, sit back in the emergency room lobby. That 50 something year old lady sat there for 48 minutes until she completely passed out. Ladies and gentlemen, there is a window frame where we can save your life in today's emergency room. And that window frame is short. The brain has six minutes that it can go without receiving oxygen before you die. This lady never regained consciousness again. She ended up being rushed back to my room. Now everything is in the emergent. And this is why critical thinking is so important because things and steps could have been done to this patient that could have prevented her from becoming a critical incident to just being emergent. We could have taken care of her where it wouldn't have been such a rush, rush, rush to try to save this patient's life. So my question to you, last time I told you, it is when you see healthcare workers running around in a frizzy, errors in healthcare occur when people are moving too fast. I promise you, now this lady, full-blown sepsis. So what is sepsis? Widespread infection. Now this lady has a tube in her throat. She's gonna go to the ICU where who knows what's gonna happen to her, but she walked into the emergency room to ask for help. And the fledgling new graduate nurse failed to recognize the seriousness of her symptoms. See, in the emergency room, you don't have time to learn how to be a nurse. You have to know how to be a nurse. What you need to do when you come to the emergency room is take all those skills you've learned and you have to learn to apply them rapidly. She failed to recognize, she failed to apply, and the charge nurse is the one who told her to put the patient back in the waiting room because she didn't have a bed yet. Unacceptable. Unacceptable. If she didn't have a bed, how did she miraculously get a bed when the patient passed out? Question to ask. So my question to you is how many people have to be affected before we start taking this issue serious? If you start speaking to people in the emergency room, people who had visits in the emergency room, they will tell you that these situations, they're serious. There's a huge line of demarcation between today's nurse 
and the nurses of the past. What that nurse did nine years ago, I have to say it over and over again, she desecrated the field of nursing when she said that new nurses should train new nurses. Not only do you have a generation of robotic-like nurse imitators, you have a generation of robotic-like nurses who are put in charge when they lack the skills to be in charge. They function like robots too. All they know how to do is say, you have a bed, is your patient up? The discharge uh, symbol is up, is the patient out of here? They don't care whether you have received all of your medication. They don't care whether or not you're healthy. They don't even care whether or not you can walk out of the emergency room, I promise you, i.e. dangerous. These nurses are soulless, heartless individuals. They just want to be able to check off the box and say that they've gotten your money. But I guarantee you one thing. I guarantee you before you leave the ER, that person rolling around with the cart to take your credit card or your money for your copay, I guarantee before you leave, you may not receive your medicine, your IV fluid. You may not feel better, but I guarantee they got your money. Now ask yourself. Are you safe in today's ERs? These two tools are a must have. Why? Because your life matters. It is time that we resurrect a healthcare with a conscience. As I said before, in the emergency rooms, seconds count and lives matter. You cannot have your weakest links impregnating your emergency rooms. Inexperienced doctors, inexperienced nurse practitioners, inexperienced physician assistants, inexperienced nurses. Why? Because in healthcare, all lives matter. Make sure you are here next Wednesday. This saga is complete and we will attack the nurse who killed the 25-year-old patient who came in with a mere simple headache. I am SR Ridley, a nurse you can trust. And they asked me, why do I do what I do? They asked me, why do you care? I care because I'm a nurse. Thank you and see you next Wednesday for Truth Hour, Healthcare Exposed. And don't forget to click that button now and subscribe, comment, share, and like. And then I, SR Ridley, a nurse you can trust, want you to get mad and hashtag my life matters and let healthcare know that you are not going to take it anymore because in healthcare, all lives matter. Are you safe in today's ERs? Next Wednesday.